Continuing the Maimu of Pasha's Tulma. Meet Nechok Achli. And in the uh, previous chapter, we spoke about the Kruv. The Kruvim. The union of a Kruv is uh, the contraction of godly light to be invested in the world of Bria, Bria Yitzhirasiya. According to that, he will explain the inyan of the two kruvim, the two kruvim, each one from each side. We ex- explained before the union of a kruv is a godly light that reveals itself in the worlds of Bia through the contraction of kruv echod mikotsum meaning that the end of one side, the lowest or the end, the end level, the lowest level in the influence in the flow of a godly light is contracted and being minimized and the other kuv it's known that isawusu de latato leads to isawusu de leilo Awakening from below leads to the awakening from above. And by doing so, by being involved in a Sawusu de Latato and Sawusu de Lelo, he draws he draws down from he has a, he draws he is now an Amshocha to draw down from above. And in in our subject, from Adam Hagodel, from the great man. There is a drawdown of light, which is called kruv, v'chinas kruv. So the light is drawn into the kruv, which means that this, the chokhmah, the attribute of chokhmah, is contracted to come down to the worlds of Bia. And in order for that to happen, in order for chokhmah, for the wisdom to contract itself, to descend to the worlds of Bia, we need Avida Sodom, we need the work of men, our work. And this is the idea of the awakening in Kriyat Shema, the uh, arousal in Kriyat Shema, or the awakening uh, to, to do Mesirus Nefesh. As we mentioned also in Tanya, the idea of having in mind the concept of Mesirus Nefesh of martyrdom or self-sacrifice, vav to survive. V'ayinu al edei Shema Yisrael izboi nechavai echod edei Shema Yisrael Now we have an opportunity to contemplate ei chavai echod ani avai lo yishanisi rak shama avai o'ilom what is Shema? Shema also means to understand. Shema Loshan Avon. Rashi and Zoya says Shema means to understand. And this is the meaning Shema Yisrael of Ayechod. A Jew has to contemplate that Hashem is Yochid. Hashem is, is the one and only. And there's nothing beside them. Ain't Oid Milvade. What is the meaning of Ani Avai Loishonisi? There is no change in the unity of Hashem. And He is the same way. Kaidim Shani Vailam, before that the world came into being. He was the only thing, the only one. After the world. And after the world came into being, it's still Hashem Echod. It's still Hashem is one. And there's nothing but Him. Because all the worlds, they're insignificant 
to him. And they are called Gloi. To him they are considered as, as naught. Why the world is so insignificant in comparison to Hashem? Because the whole creation was done through Hashem's speech, through Hashem's dibu. In the same way, when it comes to men, dibu is something external to him. That we have no, there's no value to it. You cannot compare your speech to your essence. Similarly, the creation of the world, the whole world was created through speech. Therefore, it doesn't have significant before Hashem Himself. Through contemplating that that the whole all the, <coughs> that all the worlds have no erich, have no a value or, <coughs> or significant, it arouses a great desire to come out of the world, to get out of the world, and to elevate it to the true force, to the true power. Because he's the true reality. The true reality is Hashem. You realize that he is the only thing that is real. You want to be one with him. And this is the, the deeper meaning or the inner meaning of Ve'im Cholei Chofatzi. What is Ve'im Cholei Chofatzi? The Apostle can tell him in uh, chapter uh, 73, Ayin Gimel, it says Ve'im Cholei anything that is Imcho, anything that is with you, meaning anything that is secondary, something that is nullified to you, I'm not interested. What is imcha, what is with you, I'm not interested. What is my desire is you alone. Whatever is imcha, whatever is, it has, the, has the title that is with you, I'm not interested. I'm interested in you. And that's why the assembly of the Jewish people is called Kalo, the bride, Loshin, Kloisa, Nefesh, Mimato, Lemalo. Kalo means kloisa nefesh, the yearning of the soul to ascend on high. Because of this avo, because of this mesilus nefesh, this love with self-sacrifice, the assembly of the Jewish people are called kalo, or bride. The same loshon of kloisa nefesh, the same uh, words being consumed, to being, to being nullified with the ain self itself. And this is the meaning, the kruv, from one side, to be elevated from biyah to be one with Ein Sof. So from the Knesset is all side, that is, is standing in a, in a state of elevation. From Biyah to be one with Ein Sof, Listaklo Veikro Damalko, to gaze at the beauty, at the glory of the King. Vezehu Einenu Nesui Salavai, and this is the meaning. It says in Tilim, Kuf Chav Gimel 123, Einenu Nesui Salavai. Al Deizek K'mayim Aponi Mishnim Shachmul Ma'elo Gam K'nei Navai Lekechobo. So this awakening, this arousal from Knesset Yisrael, from the assembly of the Jewish people get, it being aroused to what? To gaze at the glory of the king. To see his greatness, to see his beauty, to see his glory. When, when the assembly of the Jewish people, Knesset Yisrael, is, is gazing at Hashem, then there is a supplication from above. The same Amshachah. That Hashem is looking at us. And this is the second kruv. The second kruv that is looking at the other one. So one kruv, one in, in the Beis HaMikdash, we had the two kruvim. So one kruv is Amshach Valamai Lamata, it's a drawdown from above. And the second kruv is elevation from below going upward. <coughs> elevation from below going upward. 
מן הקפרס תאסוס הקרובים. What was the קפרס? The קפרס was the lid. If, if the ark was a box, think of a box, and the top of it was the lid that closed the box, that covered the box, or sealed the box, and that was called kapoor. And from the kapoor, the kurvim were made from the kapoor itself, from the lid itself. Okay? The, the part that closes the box was called the kapoorus. Mina kapoorus tasus a kurvim, uvichina seu koran min shemakiv lashnem bishov. So we have one is also, one kurv is also the leilo. One curve is also the latato. Rouser from below going upward. And the kapot itself is the seva of Koramin, is the power, is the godly power that encompasses all of them. Although we have one curve is coming, I'm sure of the And one curve is elevation from below. But for the makif, they're both the same. The level of seva can both be contained into one place. Being exceed, being all your kuvim perusik nafain on my law, since the kuvim had wings, and the wings were facing up. Why? Beta bazaya, sweet in the zor. The Zohar explains that the Kruvim were not made in such a way that they extended their wings, that they constantly extended their wings. Rather, they themselves would extend their wings three times a day. Miraculous thing. Are they like Mlachim? They just extended their wings three times a day. Opened their wings. Wood. Gold. Look. So, they also they extended their wings. <laughs> Says Ab, uh, so we learned yesterday, Ape Ravreve and Ape Zutre. One uh, mature face and one was a baby face. Upiresha Ramaz Sham, Rabbi Moshe Zakuta explained, Da'inu b'sha'at gimel tefilot shebechol yom. In the time of prayer, they extended their wings. He comments on the Zohar, on this statement of the Zohar, and he says, they did it in the time of prayer. They become real. No, the only thing he says that they... That, that melt of gold. That they opened their wings yeah, yeah. suddenly in the yeah, middle. Open it like that. What does it mean? It says, we learned... Before the, what is the concept of kuvim? Is amshachat in soflamata bringing the infinite light down here into this world through the contractions, through the different uh, the different screens, to be what's the, what is the objective to be vested in bia in the chokhmah of bia. And we see, it seem, we see from this explanation that three times every day the kuvim ascended on high to receive this, uh, this drawdown from Ein So So we had to, to ascend on high to say, yeah, we're ready to receive. We're receiving now from Ein Sof. From where? From Chochmah Dal Tzilus. After the contraction of the Kruvim. To illumine in Chochmah. Down here to a limited being, to us, they ascended three times to receive from Chochmah Elo. From Anpei Ravrave. And then from the great, the mature face, the, uh, the, or the big face, the great Adam. And then they come down, they descend to, it, to, to give the influence to Bia. And if they were not to ascend on high, they wouldn't be able to give. In order for them to give, they have to go, they have to ascend on high. If not for their, if not for them being elevated on high, they wouldn't be able to come down to give. 
וזהו סלקינג עד פייר, and this is the meaning of סלקינג עד פייר, they extended their wings, שהוא על ידי תוררות אהבה ויראה שבישראל, and this is through the arousal of love and awe in the Jewish people, שאהבה ויראה נקראים גדפין לפרחה לעילה. So the קרובים are ascending to אצילות, to the world of אצילות in the time of prayer. The time of prayer, the Jewish people pray, שחרית מנחה נרבי. At the time of prayer, they are being aroused, they are being awakened. The Jewish people are awakened with Ava, with love, and awe to Hashem. And since the Ava and Yira in the Zohar, it's called Gadfin, wings, wings that are ascending on high, meaning that, being, that they are aroused and they are elevated, also the Kanfei HaKruvim. The, the wings of the Kruvim are, are, are extending because of the Ava and Yira of, of the Jewish people. And then they are called Adam Agadol, the great man, the great face, the mature face. Since they are ascending to Atzilut during these times, that we know that when it comes to Atzilut, usually you have the light and you have the vessel that contains the light. And the vessel, in general, is limited, is a container of the light, is limiting the light. It's when come, Moshe, when Moshe spoke to God between those, between the, the Kruvim, right. and that so, center there of the Kruvim. Right. So it says when, when, it come, when we talk about the world of Atzilut, the vessels of Atzilut are one with Hashem. They are nullified to Hashem, unlike in other worlds. Like in our world, for example, seemingly there it in, in, has independence. In the time of prayer, when the Kruvim are ascending on high to the world of Atzilut, to the world of emanation, they are called Adam Gadol, the great man, or Api Ravrave. And they're not called Kruvim, that their meaning is Adam Akatan, Api Zutri, the small face. Why? Because in the world of Atzilut, the infinite, when it comes to the, uh, the world of emanation, the infinite light is uniting it itself with the light and with the vessels. Anything in Atzilut is all nullified to Hashem. That's the meaning of Iu vechayu vegarmu echadbeon. When you hear this meaning, it says He, chayu, His energy, His life, His vitality, vegarmu, His vessels, chadbeon, they are one with Him. Therefore, in the time of prayer, the Kruvim are now in a state of godless, in a state of greatness. They are being elevated to a higher state. Why? Because at that time, what shines in them, what's radiate in them, is light from Atzilus. And that's why tefillah, the meaning of davening is chibu, is, is a, a bond. It says about... Uh, Leah, that called her son Naftali, she, she said, why am I calling him Naftali? Because Naftula Niftalti, I'm able to create a connection with my husband, a greater connection with him. As the Mishnah uh, uh, says, someone that makes pottery, so they are, are able to tap into, to connect to the source in Atzilut. So what do we learn? Tfilah is chibur. Tfilah is a bond. As the verse says, Naftule elokim niftalti. Chibur, a bond, a connection. The Lashon HaMishnah, a tofer klei cheres. Someone that connects parts of pottery into one complete vessel. Meaning, that through the awakening of the Jewish people with love and fear, with awe, and love in the time of prayer, olim akruvim lamala. The kruvim are ascending on high, connecting themselves to their source in olam atzilut. Vechen be'avodat Hashem itkashu to dvekut anavish b'shorsha. In the time of avodat Hashem, to our service of Hashem, it's the time that the nefesh connects to its source through the awakening of davening. Now the nefesh, our soul, has a opportune time, as a chance to connect with its root above. And that's why 
And therefore the Kruvim has wings to ascend above, to ascend to Atsilut. Through the wings you are able to fly. And, the, and their extending their wings represented them are ascending to the world of Atsilut. That's what it meant. That's the meaning that their face, they were facing each other, they were face to face, and panim panim, which means they are literally united. The meaning of the verse of name Ishlachiv that they're facing each other comes as a result. Why is why is the, why they're facing each other? Because the wings were extended on high, or they extended above. So the extension of the wings is the elevation to the world of Atsilut, as we mentioned, meaning the elevation of the godly flow is now is contracted into Biyah, into, this, into these worlds, and also the elevation of Knesset Yisrael, the second Kruv is now, assembly of the Jewish people is ascending to its source, to Atsilus, and when, when they are all in Atsilus, the, the, the unity that they have, the bond that they have, is called Ponim Beponim. We'll continue, God willing, tomorrow.